I'm here in Greensboro, North Carolina off Interstate 85 at a soon-to-be-open Mercedes-Benz high-powered charging station. And I'm here at the Gaffney Outlet Malls with the Mercedes-Benz high-powered charging station that is actually open. So let's see what Mercedes-Benz high-powered charging is getting up to here on Interstate 85 in the Carolinas. Okay, let's do a site walkthrough, starting over here with the power, and right there is the electrical pole that feeds into the transformer, and I'm not sure if you can see it, but it's 2,500 kVA, which is significant, because we have five Alpitronic HYC 400s, and if you sum that up, we have five? No, we've got six, but two of them are single-handled, so okay, 2,500 would be right, that means for the nameplate capacity of the chargers, you have exact size transformer, which is a little unusual. Normally you undersize the transformer a little bit in order to allow for some oversubscription, but in this case they did not. But what I'm seeing here is two single-handled uh, stalls, one of which is marked as accessible. This is stall number one and stall number two. So I'm guessing this is for higher power charging cars, perhaps. And then we have four stall, four chargers, eight additional stalls that are dual handled. And as far as I could tell, these are all CCS. Let's keep walking and let me get the drone to spin around here. It's a little windy out, but the drone seems to be doing okay. Okay. Now, as I was saying, CCS, 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 yes, these are all CCS handles. So sometimes Mercedes-Benz mixes it up a little bit, but I guess in this case they've decided not to. And I suspect there's a Tesla supercharger station close by to here. I don't see one. Uh, it is a upscale mall. I've got an Apple store directly across the lot here, which I'll show in just a second. William Son Sonoma, uh, Pottery Barn, and... I did see several anchor stores like Belk and Macy's in the adjacent property just on the other side of the street. There's also a Whole Foods. Uh, so all the upscale amenities you expect from a higher end shopping mall. Okay, let's go over to Gaffney, South Carolina. That's where the real fun is going to happen. These are not open yet, but those are actually open. So we could do some more investigating over there. Okay, let's do a walkthrough of the station. Before I do, though, I need to discuss that this property also has a 12-stall Tesla supercharger station on it and why I may or may not want to use the Tesla supercharger station versus this one. And there's basically three reasons. First of which, I drive a Chevrolet Equinox, which has the charge port door in the driver's side front quarter panel, but it's back behind the wheel well, making those short version 3 supercharger cables an issue. I really have to park very close to the dispensers in order to make that cable reach, and that is a bother. Secondly, when I pull into a Tesla supercharger station with a Chevrolet Equinox, I by necessity have to consume two stalls, even though I'm only using one of them. Now, this is a busy site, as I said, is a really good opportunistic charging location, and so people traveling between uh, Greenville and Charlotte on 85 have the uh, opportunity to stop here and charge. And if you pull into a Tesla supercharger station and you see a Chevrolet Equinox taking two stalls, when they can come over here and use a CCS one where they're only using one stall, I think it's fair to say I'd be a little bit upset. So there is that. Uh, thirdly, price. Tesla supercharger stations tend to be very aggressively priced, especially if you sign up for their membership, which is uh, $12.99 a month. You get discounted rates, basically the same rates that Tesla owners get. But here, they recently dropped the price, so it's only $0.40 cents per kilowatt hour, which is a darn good price. Now, they do put a $50 hold on your credit card when you plug in, I noticed when I did so. Uh, so there is a bit of an issue there. Um, but still, I don't see any reason not to charge over here versus going to take two stalls with a shorter cable at a similar price over at the Tesla Supercharger. Plus, this one's near the front of the shopping mall entrance and the Tesla supercharger is way in the back in a corner not really near any of the facilities so I'm very close let me spin you around really quick 
I'm very close to the mall, and the restroom is just right over there, and the food court is just right over there. So I think this is a better spot. So for me, this makes sense. Okay, so let's talk about the station. We've got five Albitronic HYC 400s with dual handles on four of them. One of them only has one handle. I'll get to that in a second. We've got these really nice attriculating cable management arms that are very famous in the Alpitronic world. Everyone loves them. And um, the stalls themselves do not have anything obstructing. Let me go rescue the drones. Yeah, sometimes the drone gets hung up on obstacles. Okay, so as I was saying, the stalls don't have anything obstructing you from if you're pulling a trailer to post up here and be able to pull all the way through. So although you would be taking two stalls, as long as they're not in use, at least it's an option. And I'm here early in the morning. No one's here, so if I was pulling a trailer, I'd very easily be able to. And you can choose either side, which is very nice. In fact, all the stalls except the one accessibility stall is like that, which we'll get to in a second. Another thing, if you look at the top of the charger, it says eight and nine, and the post, let me see if I can zoom up, no, it won't let me, but the post itself also has these little numbers on it indicating what stall you're in, so when you're selecting from the app, you know which one to select. Mercedes-Benz high-powered charging stations have some times had criticism leveled at them that it's difficult to understand which stall you need to select in the app in order to initiate the charge. And on my Chevrolet Equinox, I could actually initiate a charge from within the car, within the ChargePoint app, or with an RFID card. So several different options for initiating a charge. And it also says plug and charge, so that will be coming soon as well. Okay. Another thing I understand these posts provide, besides illumination, when you uh, show up to the station at night, which is very a very elegant design uh, component, is these LEDs that show whether or not a stall is in use. And I'm not quite sure why these are purple. It might be those are um, still not commissioned or something. I'm not sure. But those LEDs below the numbers actually indicate whether or not a stall is in use or not and provide a little guideway uh, towards where the station is. Those might be illuminated just to provide uh, evening time, kind of like a signal that this is where the charging station is. And then when you plug in, they change to green or white, depending. Thirdly, they provide Wi-Fi. So if you look, yes, we're close to the mall, but as Wi-Fi signal goes, that's far too far for the RF signal to reach. So Mercedes-Benz went through the effort in order to ensure that their customers had access to Wi-Fi while they were here charging. So the station itself has its own Mercedes-Benz high-powered charging Wi-Fi. All right, let's go over to the accessibility stall. As you can see, we've got accessibility with the lines painted for uh, people in wheelchairs and a single handle. So you're not sharing, you get the full 400 kilowatts, but this isn't designed for higher power. This is designed for handicapped accessibility with the full stall dedicated just for the person with the ability without walking up onto a curb to get at the uh, charging screen. Very well thought out. Something else, this garbage can is different than the garbage cans over at the mall. So it looks like Mercedes-Benz took the time to ensure that there's a garbage can just for their customers so they don't have to walk all the way to the mall in order to throw things away. Let's go over to the transformer. I'm not sure if you could see it. Right down here it says 1500. So this is a 1500 kVA transformer and we've got five Alpitronic HYC 400s, each one able to output 400 kilowatts. So if you do the math on that, that's 2000. And that's 1500, which means that it's a little bit oversubscribed for the nameplate of the station versus what's being supplied by the utility. But that's very common. In fact, you don't want it to be too much power being delivered by the utility for what your nameplate is on your station. You want it to be a little bit oversubscribed so you're not leaving power on the table, so to speak. So I'd say this is very well designed. We've got the pull-through capable stalls. We've got Alpitronic with the 
very distinctive Mercedes logo. We've got a competitive price. We've got articulating arms with five meter long cables, very close to the mall and all of its facilities. The restroom is over there. The food court is over there. And all in all, just a terrific station. Okay, so this is the Gaffney Outlet Mall and it's Saturday, so it's gonna be super crowded. Luckily I got here early enough though, and there's not people around, so I think we could do a quick drone walkthrough. Let's go ahead and uh, take a look at the mall. As you can see, it's a Pottery Barn outlet. So lots of discount st stores here, immediately off the interstate, which is nice, and uh, in kind of a no man's land in between Charlotte and Greenville, South Carolina. So you get the advantage of the low taxes of South Carolina, uh, but none of the hustle and bustle of either of the two metropolitan areas. So it's very easy access into the mall in both directions, either coming from Greenville or Charlotte. And uh, very likely the land was super cheap because there is nothing around here. Let's go ahead and uh, see if we can get to the front of the mall. So the mall is kind of suffering mall blight, as is not too uncommon for anchor malls and destination malls this time of uh, and this time of history. But it does have some pretty good, pretty prominent retailers. We got Brook Brothers, we got Nike. There's Outback over there. I saw Tommy Hilfiger. I saw a Sketcher. Uh, but there are quite a few of the suites that are vacated. For instance. Uh, this one right here is a vacated suite so i'd say they're probably about 30 percent occupied something like that but definitely plenty of room to grow um should be noted that they do have a food court but there's also an outback steakhouse right over here the thing about where we are now i'd say this is a good five minute walk from where the charging station is so if you're gonna eat at outback and charge your car basically your entire charging time is gonna be spent walking to and from the Outback. You're not gonna have any time to eat. Oh, there's an Adidas. Very nice. Um, probably it would make more sense if I was charging and I wanted to use the restroom and get some food to run over here into the food court, which right now is not open. I'll get in there once the door's unlocked. Again, I'm here kind of early just to do some drone shots without the people around. It is a Saturday. And there are probably going to be a ton of people trooping through this mall here shortly. But very picturesque locale, if nothing else. Let's see, shopping hours. Saturday is 10 a.m. to 8 p.m. All right, we got a little bit of a wait. Okay, so this is one thing I was wondering about, because the food court is a good distance away if there was anywhere else to go to the restroom. And there is a designated restroom suite very close to the charging station. So that's pretty nice. So there you have it. Two very nice Mercedes-Benz high power charging stations. One in North Carolina that's soon to be commissioned and one here in South Carolina that is actually commissioned. I hope you enjoyed this video and thank you very much for watching.